So yeah, so as I was saying, we are going to be covering parts of this uh, podcast that was released last night. It is, it was, um, this was, uh, this this was released. This is the C Squared podcast featuring Christian Chirilla and Fabiano Caruana. Now, a full uh, disclosure: I when I was in St. Louis for the 960 event, I did do a podcast with them as well. So I really do hope they have success. I see 40,000 views so far. It's the C Squared podcast. Um, I think they were, they did the first episode with uh, first episode was with who again? I forget who it was with. Maybe it was just Fabiano and Christian. I'm not sure. Uh, but then they did one with Yasser. They recorded one with me. They they've done they did one with Eric Rosen, I think, as well. Um, so I do hope they have success. Again, trying to trying to point out if, if you guys want to get like high level, high level takes, uh, something that I think there really is not um any other podcast that's doing something like this. This is definitely something to um something to pay attention to for sure. So let's get into it. Now I have timestamps. We're not gonna watch the whole thing, it's an hour and a half long. Um but we have, um, we I have some timestamps. So let me go to the timestamps so we can get right into it. Uh, the first one is twenty two seventeen. So let me let me start like four seconds before and let's let's listen in. I think volume is still good. Uh, actually, no volume is. Let me up the volume to two hundred percent. And there we go. Okay, let's listen in. Uh, that's one aspect to it. But uh, today he he said the first thing about the matter since um, since he left the Singfield Cup the first time that we actually got to hear uh you know not everyone else in the world speculating but his uh, his own words and he didn't say much um but he said he, enough <laughs> well yeah he definitely if, if said you enough. know if you know who he was talking about then you kind of understand that he was confirming all the rumors mm -hmm. uh, he mentioned maxim lugi as uh hans's mentor this is not like this is not public information. I, I don't. Uh, I don't think it's ever been said that Flugi is Hans's coach or mentor or second or whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is the first time that the chess world, you know, not mm -hmm. internally, not like a few people, but the outside world is hearing about this. Right. Um, this is true. I think we knew though, right? So yeah, uh, yeah, we we uh, had heard that. I'm not 100 uh, sure why it's not public knowledge, but I'm pretty sure we knew and. I'm actually seeing a couple of things. Yeah, so I mean, like the, the thing that's important to note about this when they talk about it being public knowledge is, yes, it's it's known that Hans went to Delugi's academy. Uh, but the thing I think that that's that sort of what Fabian, what what like Christian is saying about public news or Fabian is saying about public news here is that um, is that at the end of the day, it's it was believed that Hans just went to his academy. It's not really known. Did they actually work together? How much did they do? And so it's a very random sort of name drop. And that's why Fabiano says it confirms all, all the rumors about what what Magnus was thinking. Essentially, exactly what I just said, you know, like two minutes ago when we, we covered the Magnus interview. All right. Next up, we're going to skip ahead. We have another timestamp 2435. Let me just keep going. 50 player in the world. I think sound is good to you guys. Okay. And tell me if it's not. But I think sound, sound is good. Blah, blah, blah. Sounds like... Um... Flugi is saying that they work together. Yeah, yes. that's that's what it sounds like. Yes. Um. So, yeah, Flugi's reputation. I, I see someone in the chat asking is um, he was removed from Chess.com. Uh, it's a tad quiet. Know, whoa, can, whoa, wait, is it a tad quiet or not? If it's if it's quiet, I can up the volume more. I thought the sound was good, but um, I I can up it a bit more. Let, let me put it like two forty. There we go. That should be better. Okay, it's just a tad quiet. Okay, let me put it up. Just a touch. Okay, there we go. Speculate why, but uh, usually there's only one reason why. Yes. Uh, and I don't really know much about him besides that. I mean, I, I met the guy a few times. I played Blitz with him in New York in 2016 during the World Championship match there. How was he? How was he in Blitz? Yeah, quite reasonably <laughs> decent. Uh, quite, quite reasonably decent. Now, I'm not going to laugh at Fabiano saying quite reasonably decent. But on that note, you guys, let's uh, let me see if I can find this. This was maybe the first. There, there's a short, short chess video. Let me. Um, there's a short chess video. Let me see if I can find it. Um, if I can find it, uh, and I think it was the first chess video I ever saw that had over one million views on YouTube. And of course, it does feature. It does feature. It does feature me. Let me see. Let me see. Here we go. Oh, two point for you. 2.2 million views, you guys. So we have to watch this for a second. 2.2 million views. Now, this of course is uh, this of course is um, I will uh, I, I will turn on my cam just for a minute. Or no, actually I won't. I'll just move it. Um, let me move it down here for a second and leave this here. Um, and this is from 
15 years ago you guys this this video was uploaded on november 5th 2006 um and it's speed chess game now what's great about this video i'm gonna turn off chat for just one second is that this is me of course wearing like i don't know like some dress shirt some ridiculous tie and the guy resetting the clock here of course is um is is none other than grandmaster benjamin feingold of course so this is benjamin setting the clocks and it's only a minute long so we can we can just watch it very briefly uh, i have incentive for you because you said you won't score any points ever wow. you play one minute so that's incentive yeah. score some points Yeah. So anyway, you guys, that was just uh, that. That was a that was a, that's a video. It's 2.2 million views. It's just one minute. It's a great video because, of course, you see me playing against Delugi here. Um, now, 2006, I think, is when Delugi played in the United States Chess Champion Championship. Can I lower the resolution? Thanks. This is from 2006, you guys. This is as good as it gets. Top quality is 240p. I'm sorry, you guys. What can I say? But anyway, this is Delugi. He got a wild card to play in the U.S. Championship in 2006. So this is the first time that um that I that I ever uh, played played against him. 240p. Wow. Yeah. So let's get back to the video now. Um, and let me um put put chat back on and let me move the cam as well. Move the cam back to where we were. Okay. So all right. So so let's get back to this video. Um, and here here we are. So this is uh okay. We already passed the clip. Or, or the spot where, where the timestamp was now as as they were saying here the first time Fabio on a plane was 2016 he is a very decent blitz player I think he was the world junior champion if I'm not mistaken or maybe it was like a some sort of like blitz blitz event but there was some event that he won when he was very young very very talented player um very strong GM without a doubt but as we know as Fabiano says here Benjamin I think Benjamin Bach has, has said it as well um he was caught cheating on chess.com so let's let's keep going next one is i guess i'm we're going to be watching this this next bit for like 20 minutes because apparently is the meat of the story um but here we go by leaving the tournament after he plays him so things changed since then which is very interesting like what uh what happened between miami and the sinkfield cup mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because so in the sinkfield cup we should uh remind viewers that uh hans was a replacement for uh, Rapport, who couldn't make it to the United States, who was unable to play. He was supposed to be playing in the tour, but he couldn't make it, so he had to withdraw. And Hans was a last-minute replacement. Uh, Hans himself said this. First, he was supposed to play the Rapid and Blitz. Then, after that, uh, they instead changed it to, he, uh, to I think, Shanklin was invited to Rapid and Blitz, and, Jeffrey. and Hans was invited to Sink... Uh, it was Jeffrey? Jeffrey, yeah. Jeffrey yeah. and Hans was invited to the Sinkfield Cup. Uh, and we know that Magnus already had a problem. As soon as he heard that Hans was invited to the Sinkfield Cup, like people think that this was because he lost a game to Hans. So this is the first first important thing. Now, as we go through this interview, um, there are a couple things that, I mean, I, I've already read some of the notes of, of some of the things that are said. Of course, I haven't watched it, so, so this is the first time I'm, I'm reacting to it. Um, but there are going to be spots in here where we, where certain things are brought up and i am going to essentially say like what whether things were known or not known um now what fabiano says here about magnus already considering dropping out this is something that was known i was aware of this prior to just hearing this right now this is one of those things in the super champ circles that was already known so uh what fabiano is saying here like i'm just i am essentially confirming it because i also know i also knew this as well let's keep going it it predates that by a few days. He he was already upset about Hans's inclusion in the Sinkfield mm -hmm. Cup, and he already was um, considering leaving. So we we know this, right? 
um yeah so you guys are saying can i can i join the super gm circle right exactly now again like one of the things that's very important to note and i, I probably will have to say this a few times throughout this when, when fabiano refers to certain things is that at the end of the day you have to understand yes i am of course a content creator i am a broadcaster at the same time i do play chess and so when things are being discussed when things are told like again there are things that i know but at the end of the day like it's i am still playing tournaments these are still my colleagues these are people that i know and respect immensely so it is a situation where like i'm not just going to come out and like say all these different things um you know straight up so there are going to be times in this video where i do know fabiano is going to say certain things and you know it's not known in the general public but it's very well known within the super grandmaster circles so that, that's interesting because that means that there's only like a short period, a uh, short window. It was like three days between the two tournaments. Right. Mm -hmm. So what happened in those few days? This, this I just don't know. Um, he suspects the guy. Uh, no, you know, the, the reason also, you guys, that I, the, the other thing that I, I mean, the, the other reason that I, I do have to stress this and say this as well is because I, I think a lot of people when this initial thing, when, when, you know, when things start breaking out, like, People, people, for whatever reason, I know there's certain places like R Chess, for example, that they love to think that I'm just pulling stuff out of my, you know, oh, I mean, now that's, I mean, that's kind of an apt, that's an apt saying now, but, um, but at any rate, people, I think, tend to think that I'm just making this up. This is not something that has been, that, that is like unknown. This does not come from, come from out of left field. Yeah. I mean, the moment I say it, it's like, wait a sec. That's yeah, exactly. Yeah. So anyway, let's keep, let's keep going my my feeling is that he has this suspicion about hans for a long time and um and then something about the first three games of the singfield cup kind of like made him um either extra suspicious or extra emotional about it mm -hmm. uh, because like okay from my point of view i don't see his game Hans's games in this from the Singfield Cup as something very suspicious. Mm -hmm. He played really well the first three games. Uh the game against Magnus was impressive. The game against Shakriar was impressive. Uh but but nothing out of the ordinary, right? I mean nothing that you wouldn't consider a player of Hans's level and let's say he's uh between the range of let's say 2650 to 2700, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh or maybe closer to 2700, maybe like we can elaborate on that or we can uh, speculate on that, but it's not too important. Uh, something that a player of that level is capable of doing. So I, I feel like Magnus's decision to leave the tournament was, was somewhat emotional uh, and probably wasn't the right decision. Uh, mm, interesting. But, but you know, I, I mean, he, he felt uncomfortable uh that's that's very clear he felt uncomfortable before the tournament and maybe the first three games uh exacerbate exacerbated that and then that just gave him the impulse to leave the tournament um i'm trying to understand what happened so like this is this is really important to note as well this is this is a bit this is a big uh th this is a this is a big question mark that rem that like I, again what is known like as I said, this is not some secret knowing that Magnus had his reservations about, about playing the tournament with Hans being there. But the real question is ultimately, why did he play the tournament and then withdraw as opposed to say withdrawing at the start? Like if he, if he had the concerns, like my, my general view of it is that if, if he felt so strongly about the issue, um, that he's Magnus Carlsen, he's the world champion. He's the foremost authority. That is, that is just how it goes. If Magnus says, I'm not going to play the tournament with Hans in the tournament, you would assume that the organizers in St. Louis are going to like, they're going to say, okay, we, we, we understand your point. Hans will, will, will find someone else to play in the tournament is what you would think. Um, so that is the, that is the big question mark. Um, it, 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 he, because he lost, obviously, are you seriously this dumb? Well, but the question is like, does that, does that, what does that mean though? Like, I don't believe that Magnus simply makes that decision. Like if he's already very suspicious, I mean, maybe he thought he saw something in those first three games too. Like, I don't know. Oh, Fabiano, Fabiano answers later. Okay. All right. Well then let's, uh, let's keep going. If he withdrew before the tournament, no one would guess it was about Hans. My guess is that he wanted the world to know this stuff about Hans. Um, maybe, maybe. So anyway, okay, let's keep going though. Since again, I haven't seen this, so we'll see what Fabiano says in between Miami and the Singfield Cup. Um, we do know that there were some, well, business uh, dealings, right? I think um, it was before the Singfield Cup started 
that Chazalcom announced the mm -hmm. um, purchase of uh, the Play Magnus Group. So that was a huge news, I guess, leading up to the Singfield Cup. There's some speculation that Magnus probably uh, saw some some things um, or uh, was shown some things by the Chess.com team, um, basically a list of potential uh, people that were flagged. And um, based on that, his reaction could be, let's say, explained. Um, we don't know that. We don't have any inside info in that one for sure. No, no. I, I, I mean, I, I can tell you that that, that was not the case. Um like Magnus has had these suspicions for a long time. And, and I can also say this from like what people have, because I didn't think about this at all. Mm. I didn't really know Hans as a player until I only met him last year. And mm -hmm. I, I didn't think much of it. Like he's a talented player. Mm -hmm. he, I played blitz with him last year and uh, we were playing in Riga. Um, we played bug house. He's obviously a talented player and he's obviously a good blitz player. And he seemed like a good classical player. Mm -hmm. So I didn't think much of it. But then, like, on half a dozen occasions over the past year, people ask me, what do you think about him? Do you think he's cheating? There's a lot of speculation going so on. So here we, here, we here, here we get to the next stage of everything. Now, when this initially broke after Magnus withdrew, and I spoke a lot about this topic, this is essentially exactly what I said as well between the lines, which is the thing is, as I said, I've heard these rumors for a very long time as well. I have always assumed it's complete nonsense. It sounds like Fabiano thought the exact same thing, that basically you just assume it's nonsense. But the thing is, when you start hearing it over and over and over again from different people who are well-respected within the chess community, it does make you step back and think for a second. Because it's like, again, we look at what Levant said and how like people are paranoid. You you always assume some some junior player has cheated. Like, I mean... That, that is true. Like, you you know, it's very, very calm that you hear like, okay, like one or two people, they get salty over a game. You think that like somebody might have cheated, but then the rumor dies down immediately because of course it's completely unfounded. Um, And so when you start hearing it over and over, like it, it gives you pause and you start, you kind of start to like, you assume that it's like still nonsense, but you don't really know. Uh, we all know Prague is, <laughs> Prague is cheating. I've never heard a word about Prague. I've never heard a, uh, heard a word about Vincent. I, I, I've just, I've never heard a word about anybody. I've never heard a word. So Fabiano is essentially saying exactly what I was saying um, between the lines. Um, why only Hans, Aragais, and Gukesh? I mean, I, I've never, I've never heard anything. I've never heard anything. Anyway, let's keep going. Um, um, this is, and of course, this reaches Magnus. This reaches everyone. Uh, mm -hmm. This is not just. I mean, the chess world is a small world, and very true. And if some people start talking about how someone maybe is cheating, you know, that that snowballs, and people start to to hear about it more and more. So this is not something recent yeah whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa. The, the difference is fabiano will never get flack for saying the exact same thing as you did i mean yes I, that, that obviously goes without saying of course yeah i just yeah, I, 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 I think if you're like entrenched into the chess world you probably have heard about this about these rumors right like people just uh basically asking about it but i think hans also mentioned nobody and he knew about these rumors as well but no uh grandmaster um, or at least one of his, um, you know, top level peers challenged him face to face directly about this. Mm. So he was hearing about it, but nobody actually said it uh, to him face to face. Now, then comes Magnus and makes an incredible accusation, more or less. Um, not directly, obviously, indirectly, but people understood what he meant. Um, so, the thing is, so when I heard about these things, I, I kind of wrote it off. Yeah. Exactly. Because, yes. Just like, like me. Exactly just to the give same one instance, thing. Hans is playing a tournament in the Prague Masters, right? In Czech Republic. And he ties for first with Kamer uh, in classical. I forget how many games it was. They tie for first and Kamer uh, beats him in the, a rapid playoff. Mm -hmm. And someone comes up to me and says, isn't this suspicious? He plays really well in classical and then in rapid he gets crushed. And then I, I, I can't take this stuff seriously because what does... That means nothing. I, I mean, mm -hmm. you can have good days. Yeah, like have... I mean, this is this is this is actually a great example. Like I, I can tell you why this is a great example. This, Fabiano's example is perfect, and I'll use it in the context of another event. So, if we use it in the context of another event, um, 
you know, you look at how Hans did in the Rapid Chess Championship. I know that in the, in the last couple of weeks, he, he did quite well. He beat me on his road to winning one of them. He finished, I think, in maybe the semifinals, another one. But the first, but prior to the last couple of weeks, he never made the knockout stage. Like, he went 0 for, like, 0 for, like, 15. Maybe it's not 0 for 15, but, like, he went 0 for 10 or 0 for 15. So, like, this is another, you can use, like, another even better example of the context of the, of the uh, Rapid Chess Championship. So, let's keep listening to what Fabian was saying. The bad days, it doesn't... Like mm -hmm. this to me isn't evidence at all. So right. I heard all these. Yeah. See, like, like this is the thing. Like you hear this is like okay, but I mean, what? Like what? Do, I mean, like really? Like is that what? Is that what it is? Like I mean, it's, it, I I I completely agree with what Fabian was saying. It's like you hear about this. You know, it's like also like RCC. I I had heard some stuff about the Rapid Chess Championship. It's like okay, it's like okay, like you know, he's not being the knockout. So so probably like there's something going on. Like somehow delay or something is like preventing him from doing something. And it's still like. Again, like it's really, really hard to honestly like believe in any of that stuff. It's just like it sounds so ridiculous. It really does. Frankly, to me, it sounded like stupid rumors, uh, mm -hmm. based off of either very circumstantial, anecdotal data, or nothing at all, just based on pure like emotion and and bias. And mm -hmm. I wrote it off. And also because I understand how these things go, and I've also been suspicious of people. <laughs> uh, on more than one occasion, because you know you get suspicious, right? We're in a, we're in a computer age. True. And uh, very true. And that always like penetrates your thoughts that maybe someone's cheating. And I know that I've I've had these suspicions, and they always haven't always been logical. Sometimes maybe they've been accurate. Sometimes maybe more often than not hmm. they've been um, misguided. So I know how that can uh, influence people. That you think hmm. someone's cheating, and then you grab onto a little piece of data that that confirms your bias and uh, and so on. So I heard all these rumors. To me, I, I didn't put much uh, stock into it. Mm. Uh, what is relevant is that Hans has shown uh, a willingness to cheat, mm. right? That that is that is relevant. If he's willing to do it once, you can speculate that maybe he's willing to do it again. Uh, because that, that shows a facet of his personality, right? That he's not entirely opposed to the idea, mm -hmm. right? Some people on principle will never cheat, right? Mm -hmm. uh, some people might. Uh, and and that, that does give some cause for suspicion. Uh, but everything is exploded with, uh, with Magnus. You know, I, I didn't expect that. Well, I at thought... some... At some point, somebody had to do something, right? Because we were all in this situation where we knew some people are cheating. We knew some people are being flagged online, but you cannot say anything because you never, almost never have 100% proof unless mm -hmm. you literally catch the other person um, with a computer in, in the toilet or with their phone in the toilet, like they caught rouses, right? If you don't have that uh, and you accuse directly somebody of cheating, then you risk getting sued. Um, that's why... I would assume chess.com is uh, not directly accusing anybody, but since they are a business, they can pretty much shut uh, anybody's accounts based on uh, their suspicions. But they cannot accuse directly and publicly anybody because they will get sued unless they have 100% proof on camera, which is extremely difficult. <laughs> Sorry, I, I have to pause the video for a second. So Ryuko Shogun says, GM, at, at, Hikaru, G, at GM Hikaru, you are smart. You threw the games in rapid only to play second with Blitz. Way to throw off the people you were cheating. That's why you are great. <laughs> a good one, dude. Good one. <laughs> oh, man. That's a great one. Thumbs up. Great originality. Yes. Yeah. Great originality. Honestly, if that was possible, I should get... um. I should get like I should get an Oscar for uh, for 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 the acting performance that that I did after I lost to Fabiano in that ridiculous final game of the rapid portion. Yeah, like I should um I, I should get an Oscar for how angry I was after after I threw that last game to Fabiano. That was so annoying. God. And then at the end of that Fabiano game, yeah, there's this this like Rook D five. Ugh, gross. Anyway, let's keep going. To uh to 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 have yeah, so at that's, some point that's the issue. The only way to combat. Uh, cheating. No, no, it, it, it hits a nerve, you guys, only because, not only because, like, I still, when I think about that game, I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed about how that stupid last game against Fabiano went. But let's let's get back to the actual topic. In chess, was to have somebody with some influence, somebody that will be taking some serious hit, which is right now Magnus, um, come and say something, or at least uh, take some very very strong measures to point to the fact that he believes somebody is um 
not well not this is this is why I, I don't actually. even though i don't think magnus did the right thing necessarily I, i'm not like i understand his position and i think it's like people have to understand it's not a selfish position yeah uh, he's taking a principled stand based on what he believes in and if he's right then he's actually doing something which potentially harms himself for the for the good of of chess mm. if he's wrong then he jumped the gun and, and he's possibly damaging another person so we can only argue about um if he's being a bit too cavalier with his approach right but he's not doing it out of selfish reasons uh he's he really thinks that that something wrong is going going around um so very important that's, that's very important I, so like th this is also something again like probably one of the most critical points i think in this video so fabian was saying um he's he's essentially saying as i understand that like magnus is doing this because he's doing it sort of because of his concerns as opposed to like as opposed to like being salty or anything else um which is very important because magnus is obviously taking a huge beating um on social media he's just taking a huge huge beating without without a doubt I don't think that like he's you know he's a bad guy for this or anything right he might be wrong about it mm -hmm. um but i don't think that he has bad intentions um the other interesting thing is that uh like as as you said you can't really ever directly catch someone you can only use statistical data to infer if someone is cheating or not right yeah. you're, you're never going to catch someone mm -hmm. in the act unless it's uh, it's some idiot like Rousis who <laughs> goes into the bathroom with his phone. Oh my god, <laughs> some idiot like Rousis. Jeez, uh, I, I mean, like, uh, out of all the people to say that, I was not expecting Fabiano to say that. That's um, that's a good one. That's pretty good. And uh, and then he he just gets caught on camera and put in newspapers, um, like that. That's that's going to happen very rarely people who have even like a shred of intelligence will probably do it in a way where you won't catch them in the act, but you can possibly infer from their, their moves. Um, if, hmm. if they're playing fairly or not. Uh, so we have, we don't like have a central source uh, for this, you know? Yeah. Like we have, we have a bunch of different people or, or organizations that have their own models, but we don't have one, uh, you know, one clear authority in this matter, right? We have chess.com, they have their um, their algorithm, which from what mm -hmm. we understand is quite uh, advanced and is quite good at detecting cheating. We have FIDE, the governing body of chess, uh, who get their statistical analysis from, um, from uh, Kenneth Reagan, who is a stat statistician, I think, right? He's a he's a professor. Mm -hmm. um, and you have different websites. Lee Chess, they have their own thing. Um, uh, you know, Chess Twenty Four. I assume they have their own thing, right? And and then you have some uh, individuals, right? Like there's a, a famous guy by the name of Poonin who the Ukrainian, um, yes, who has um, done a lot of videos. Uh, where he, you know, uh, supposedly catches cheaters or analyzes their games or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a bit of an issue uh, that you don't have any like clear anything clear to look to. Like a lot of people uh, look to Kenneth Reagan for uh, for what he said, um, which was that he didn't detect any any mm -hmm. evidence of cheating in Hans's play in the last. I think it was two years. I think that was the time period. Right. Um, so I, I would say that, like, I have no reason to uh, to assume that, you know, Hans was cheating over the board in the past two years. But I would also take Reagan's analysis with a large grain of salt. Um, and the reason why is not because I have any, like, insight into his algorithm or his methods. Uh but because I know of a case, a very high profile case, where with absolute certainty, I can say that someone was cheating in, a, what? in a, an important event. And um, the person was investigated and was also exonerated based on uh, Reagan's um, analysis. Mm. 
Wait, and... what, 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 wait, wait a second. Did I just hear that correctly? Wait, 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 wait a second. Sorry. Did Fabiano really just say what I think he said? He did? All right, let me go back. Someone was cheating in, a, in a, an important event. And um, the person was investigated and was also exonerated based on uh, Reagan's um, analysis. Mm. And, and I'm certain that there was cheating. It's, it's, for me, it's just an open and shut case. It's, uh, there is no doubt. Oh my God, what the heck? I have no idea who he's referring to. I actually have no idea what, what event this even is. I, this is something that I don't know. I have no idea what Fabian was referring to. Um, he's not talking to, no, he, he, must be, he must be talking. I don't know what, he, what, what, he, what event, what, like what major event has happened? I'm trying to think of like a Bundesliga or something of, of that nature. I, I doubt it's online. The way, the way that Fabian was saying it, he has to be referring to over the board. Send him a text and ask him in the Super GM chat. Yeah, good one, you guys. Good one. Um, he's talking about the Hans Magnus game. Very funny, you guys. Very funny. Um, yeah, I, I have no idea, actually. I have no idea um, what he's referring to. But assuming... But I'm sweating very funny. Yeah, but assuming that Fabiano is 100% sure of something and Reagan's, uh, or, or Reagan or Regan, however you pronounce his name, that his, his model basically exonerated the guys. Uh, people are assuming it's the Canadian Open, but no one knows. Uh, what, what event was that? I actually don't know what the Canadian Open, I, I'm, I'm familiar with that event. Um, uh, though, I, you know, one thing that I was, I was reminded of recently, I'd actually forgotten about it. I will say, I will say one thing, speaking of Canada, there is one instance where I played an over, over the board game and someone did cheat against me. And it was a game that I played in Canada. I'm not going to say like the tournament or which city it was in, because that will be a little bit too obvious, but I did have an instance where this happened. And in order for it to not become this really big issue, the player, um, they, they ended up like, they, they were playing on the top board in the final round and they, they, res they resigned their game. Uh, they, they just resigned their game because that was the way that the organizers resolved the situation as opposed to it blowing up and becoming something far, far, far more serious. So that, that don't, don't, don't say anything, just tell us who. I mean, people can probably figure it out if they, if they look at the number of turns I played in Canada, but that's, um, I'll, I'll leave it there. It was not Eric Roman. No, of course. I've never, I've never played Eric Roman over the board, which is also kind of insane too. All right, let's keep going. Although I have a feeling Eric and Amon might actually know who it was. Let's keep going. Doubt in my mind that this person was cheating and, and, and they got away with it. Um, so I think that he basically errs very much on the side of um, like that someone really has to very blatantly cheat to get, uh, to get detected by his, his method. Uh, so that that's why I I, I don't really um, I don't put too much stock into into what uh, what he came up with, although he might be right. Like, <laughs> oh my I, god, uh, I don't see any reason to suspect that Hans was cheating anywhere from what I saw in the past uh, in in like the tournaments that I played, you know, with him or like oh. Oh my God, it, it, Fabiano, isn't Fabiano basically just saying that he doesn't, isn't he just saying that basically Ken Regan's like anti-cheat system is just like, doesn't work? I, I mean, it, it, am I crazy? Isn't that what Fabiano is basically saying? Isn't he just saying like, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't work at all. He's saying it's useless. Jeez. Okay. Wow. Okay. Let's keep going. Um, or played against him in these online events, uh, but but who knows? Uh, it's it's difficult, of course, because if someone has has a history of it, then you'll always suspect that person, whether they become clean for the rest of their life mm -hmm. or not. That's and true I guess too. That's yeah. an important question, and I think this is something that Magnus was mentioning as well, basically saying that we shouldn't take lightly cheating in any way shape or form including online like we shouldn't be looking at cheating online as let's say a uh, lighter uh, offense than cheating face to face and i tend to agree with that because 
I think this is basically the only way to kind of get rid or at least uh, this. Okay, sorry. So, so someone in chat says, we all know it. You super GMs have a secret society. You, you, you meet up in the woods twice a year and decide all kinds of world events, spill the beans, buddy. Yeah, sorry, you guys. We're not, we're not, we're not the Bilderberg group. I'm sorry. Like, I, I know it's, it's nice to think about that. We have our, our secret, secret, like, what's it? Skull and Bone Society or, you know, the Bilderberg group. I mean, it's, it's nice to think that, but that's not, that's not how the world works. Um, or maybe it does. You never know. All right, let's keep going. It's incentivized cheating um on a grand scale just basically say that okay you cheated online you're never going to get exonerated um or at least you're going to receive let's say a two three year ban over the board as well mm -hmm. now at the same time you're also going to completely destroy your reputation and um basically i i think we need to find a system in which we disincentivize cheating on such a scale that young kids young impressionable kids that might have uh you know ambitions and might uh, uh think of uh cheating as a uh, low-key offense not think about it like that and basically understand the gravity of it and and and, and how important it is not to do it mm -hmm. um what do you think about that i mean i i don't view it so i've thought about this for quite a long time for the past two years, basically since um, I played that pro chess league match where um, where Petrosian was caught. Mm -hmm. And I had a very okay. weird feeling after that game. I didn't say anything to anyone except to Rustam Kazimjanov because he was uh, my coach there. And um, and I told him I just played a really weird game and, <laughs> and it felt very strange to me. And then... Uh, a few days okay. later, you know, things exploded because Wesley basically publicly accused accused him, which was also very risky on Wesley's part because, as you said, these public accusations um, the famous, they can lead uh, to the famous PP and Pampers episode. Yes, well, the greatest, probably the greatest, uh, <laughs> the greatest comeback from a chess player ever. I mean, I have to say, like, I really admire Petrosian for what he wrote to Wesley. It's just. <laughs> That It'll live on in eternity, but um, but to get back to more serious things. So I, I've thought about this for a long time, uh, and and I don't re like my thoughts have only gotten more pessimistic uh, over time because to me it seems that if someone is very strong and motivated to mm -hmm. cheat mm -hmm. and they ha find a system it's very, very difficult to ever stop this person. Uh, and one of the reasons is what you mentioned, which is that we don't really have a clear method for this. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, True. The, someone gets caught online, they get um, six what months. amounts to a warning. Oh, right? warning and then six mm -hmm. months, I guess, uh, something like that. A short ban. No, basically very little public. Uh, if they're high profile, I think it's borderline public. Like it's not public, but everybody mm -hmm. knows it because everybody knows the name of the accounts uh, from which top players usually play from. And if that changes, in general, there's only one explanation. And that okay, is but, that they cheated, right? But okay, I, I'm not going to name any names, but there are players in the top 50 who have been caught, who mm -hmm. have suffered no negative repercussions. Mm -hmm. this, this is just like that that they face some kind of negative stigma because yeah this is uh, uh people... this, this is related to that list i mean it's like i saw there, there's this like what it's like yak it's like i it's like what yakubat or not yeah yakubab it's a it's yakubov i think what's it yakubov was it cinderov i think parham and sadwani and, and like one or two others like i mean I, i've seen this post on many different many different places now i mean maybe there are others who knows but um yakubov edmonton oilers i don't know what you mean by that but um but i've seen that post in many places what constitutes cheating serious question is it use of an engine i i would assume that's what they mean but i i mean this list was posted on many different places it, it was posted um uh, it, was, it was posted there I've, I've seen that list in many different like our chess and, and other websites see that their account got closed I don't see that as as being entirely true. To me, it doesn't seem like it affects their careers too negatively. Mm -hmm. uh, from the cases that we've seen, and we've seen some, right? I, again, I'm not going to say any names, but um, but the as Magnus said, the the punishment is rarely harsh, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, but the other thing is, 
how can it be more harsh? Like, let's say someone cheats on chess.com or another chess site. They get caught by that site. They get banned. They mm-hmm. get reported to FIDE. And FIDE says, well, yeah, we'd love to. We believe you. But this isn't our, our algorithm. We, we can't trust it. True. Uh, with 100% certainty. And we can't ban someone from, uh, you know, official Very chess, true. right, under the FIDE jurisdiction based on on your methods we have no insight this is a very good point yeah Uh, and if fide does that maybe they are at risk of getting sued by by the player right and maybe that player has a has a case against them because um it it gets very complicated so i don't know if that's really a solution i i guess one thing that fide can do is basically just partner up officially with one of these platforms um that have an anti-cheating measure or Basically I mean, say- the problem the problem though with FIDE is that FIDE can't actually partner easily because they have their whole separate like FIDE play zone and FIDE arena events and things of that nature. So it it's kind of, it doesn't quite work. Chess.com just needs to buy FIDE problem solved. Maybe, maybe in the future that's possible. But like FIDE has their own online platform. So like it's very hard for them to necessarily partner. I, I mean, as, 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 I, as I understand it. Say this is the official anti-cheating measure that we abide by and uh, take um take action based on that so for example if they use the chess.com let's say hypothetically yeah i'm not saying that they are or uh, or they have their own basically if this anti-cheating measure flags you and we have serious conviction behind um behind that flag then we reserve let's say the uh, authority to ban you uh, for let's mm. say a short period of time six months if you've done it multiple times okay two years you cannot play in any tournaments um report it to feed it okay but but they it. have that in place i mean they have reagan's analysis right uh so, so FIDE, fide is tied up with reagan's analysis is that what they use i mean from what i understand like if you go because i've i've talked to uh like let's say i had some some very serious concerns the the same thing uh, in the past this this relatively high profile tournament by the way i wasn't involved in the tournament i was only watching it from the side mm-hmm. um some people asked me what do you think about these games right they just said look at the games and just tell me what do you think without any giving me any names they just asked me my thoughts and i came back to them and i said uh yeah this this player and these games look really weird they really stand out to me and so this case went up to FIDE and the, and the player was exonerated mm. and, and that was, that was that. Um, wow. That was like this, by the way, is proof that like, not everything, like I have no idea. I actually have no idea what he's referring to. I have no idea what tournament or anything he's referring to. I mean, but like, I, I'm trying to figure out. So like if Fabian knows this, does that mean like, that means somebody made an official complaint though, is, is what it has to mean. Like somebody made an official complaint. Is, is my guess. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't, you got, you, people are saying it's Canadian open. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe who knows, but yeah, this is, this, this actually is kind of scary. This, this is kind of scary to me hearing this, that the basically, uh, the, the basically he's saying that someone cheated for sure. Like he, Fabiano, another guy, you know, one of the greatest players of all time is now also saying that, like, so he's sure someone cheated. Like, this is Fabiano, one of the greatest players, greatest evaluators of like chess talent. You know, he's been he's been in this world for a long time, and he's like, sure, somebody cheated, and the the algorithm exonerated them. So, again, this may, this also makes me feel very very uneasy. This makes me feel really really uneasy. How does Fabiano know 100? percent I'm sure he looked at the games and it's just like there were too many moves that made no sense at all. Um, so like yeah, and, and I mean this is Fabiano again. Uh, like Fabiano, like uh, somebody who's going to get salty and just like be sur- actually, it's, he's not even involved as he's saying, but like he's going to be salty. And like, I mean, I, I don't, I, I it's just, it's very hard to ever see Fabiano in any world, like being that sure, unless he's sure. So from what I understand, if, if there is some sort of person in question, person in under suspicion, then that that's where it goes to. Uh, right. And, and that seems to be uh, almost a definitive authority, right? Like, Mm-hmm. When uh, Reagan comes out and defends Hans as saying, I see no evidence of cheating in the past two years, that's an exoneration. True. Um, what, what would be interesting for me is we have Hans saying he cheated between the ages of 12 and 16, right? He gave those time periods. This is from his own, his own words. Mm-hmm. I think that Reagan should run analysis on those four years when Hans admitted to cheating 
and see if he can detect cheating <laughs> because I suspect that he won't be able to. <laughs> oh because my! I, I really don't. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Oh man, Fabiano's like Fabiano with a left hook. Jeez. Oh my gosh. This is this is really brutal. This is this is really brutal. That that is like that is like that is really brutal. Oh man. Um laying down the hammer. Yeah. Okay, wow. Wow. So I mean, so basically as 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 I replay it, sure, I can go back, but I mean as I see it. As, as I understand this, it sounds like Fabiano, like, I mean, when he says, like, he's trying to be politically correct in a sense when he says, like, large grain of salt, but it sounds to me like Fabiano is basically saying that the system just is total nonsense. That's essentially what I, the way that I read it, is that Fabiano thinks it's total nonsense and it's just not going to catch anybody. Um, which, if that is actually, like, a, like if, if we use that and we assume that that is true, then we're in really bad shape for the, as, a, as the chess world because how can we catch anybody period over the board if someone cheats um so i i mean it's it's very yeah chess is dead i mean i don't know but like if fabiano is basically saying it's i mean it sounds like he's saying it's nonsense so i then it's like what do you do at all what do you do at all those four years yeah let's go back I think 12 and we have han saying he cheated between the ages of 12 and 16 right he gave those time periods this is from his own his own words. Mm -hmm. I think that Reagan should run analysis on those four years when Hans admitted to cheating and see if he can detect cheating <laughs> because I suspect that he won't be able to <laughs> because I, I really don't think that uh, his algorithm is sensitive enough to, uh, to detect uh, any sort of nuanced cheating by someone who really knows what to do and how to avoid detection. Um, that's that's a problem for me. Um, and yeah, as for like a solution, I don't, I've thought about it. I hope that um, chess.com can continue to um, refine their algorithm so, so that it can even more effectively catch players who are cheating because I think that they're at the forefront of this. I think that they have mm -hmm. the best, and Hans also said this, they have the best anti-cheating detection in the world. So that's what he said. And I, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I hope that they can make inroads in this. And, and because like we see right now, there's a tournament going on. We already mentioned it, the Chess Global Championship. The first prize is $200,000. Right. That's huge. That's real incentive. Yeah. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. That's a lot of money for a lot of people. For most people in chess, that's uh, life-changing money, basically. I, and now we should, we should uh, elaborate. For most people, quote unquote. Um, all right, let's keep going. Rate that. Um, <laughs> It's only partially online. After you get to top eight, you have to play over the board. Or Sorry, you guys. Person, I can't help but laugh at that. But you play Sorry. in person, right? You don't play actually over the board. It's like an eSports type format. Where yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I corrected myself myself with that. It's, it's not going to be over the board, but still, it's going to be in person where things become dramatically more difficult to try to set up any sort of cheating. But you, but you know, one other thing that's very important about this, and I think I'm going to skip to another, another segment of this, but, but one of the things that's very important about this as well to note is this is the other thing that when we talk about cheating online versus over the board, but maybe even just online period, is that like up until the, this whole boom that occurred in the last couple of years, there were not tournaments online which had big prize funds. So like it was, online was never viewed as a very serious like pursuit. You just did it to like improve your tactics, play blitz, because you're bored, whatever it might be, if, you, if you're if you're a rising player, like people weren't doing it to, because because there were prizes or you're trying to improve. They were just trying to improve. So now, like there are all these big tournaments. So now it's like very serious. In some ways, online chess is as serious as over the board. Um, so because of that, everything has completely changed in the uh, in the last couple of years versus prior to like the pandemic. So okay, so we need to skip ahead. I, again, we don't have all day, so let me go ahead. So there's the next spot is like 105. So let me. Let me go here. Let's let's watch. Throwing here. his concerns over to the organizers or to FIDE or to chess.com or whoever, uh, whatever governing body he wants to, but he chose to take it to the streets and, um, mm. and made it a public matter, which is very risky from his point of view. True. Uh, I guess we'll see. Uh, yeah. I don't know what else to say about that. Take it to the streets. I really like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I, I think another piece of the puzzle that we should probably address since we are discussing this at a length is 
the very uh, obvious change in tone for uh, Hans, right? Because he was very vocal against a lot of parties. He was vocal against Magnus. He was vocal against Chess.com. Um, uh, he was vocal a lot of, uh, against a lot of people, right? And then once Chess.com statements came out, pretty much doubling down on the fact that he got caught and we have basically proof and we've already told you about this proof in an email which also was contradicting what Hans was saying because Hans initially was saying that Chess.com was did not give him any response um, mm -hmm. as to why they banned him, as to why they closed his account. But Chess.com pretty much doubled down and said publicly that, yes, we told you. And what intrigued me after is that we haven't heard anything from Hans after that. Basically, no uh, interviews in the Singfield Cup. I think that came about in round six or seven. So he definitely had time to say something about it, um, to challenge those statements from chess.com, but he said nothing. He stopped posting on Twitter. I think he was also posting on Twitter a lot, saying that Hikaru mm -hmm. and, and all his detractors are basically quiet right now. But then he was the one that became quiet. So that intrigued me a lot and also let's say pushed me more to the side of yeah i don't know what to believe anymore right definitely i was sympathetic to hans uh, after his initial interview and and i i felt a definite passion um from coming from him uh, a genuine passion coming from him but his silence definitely felt a little bit suspicious now obviously we're not going to accuse anybody but how do you feel about that how do you mm. feel about hans's um silence let's say after the chess.com statement oh i i think it's very likely that he lawyered up mm. which okay. is a smart thing to do okay and i was probably advised uh not to say anything more about it um which could be for many reasons it could be that um Although there were portions of what he said which were true, and it was certainly a very compelling speech, it wasn't 100% the truth. And, uh, you know, if he goes on accusing people of doing this or that, then there could be legal repercussions for not telling the entire truth. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my suspicion, at least. Uh, I think that he realized that the wisest thing to do would be for it all to just kind of quietly go away and um and for people to think that this was just some sort of um you know lashing out by magnus who was upset about a game and it would make him look uh more or less like he was just a you know victim caught in the crossfires of of uh mm. of someone who was upset that they, they lost um so I, I think from Han's point of view, uh, it's very good for him if this, people just stop talking about it um, and stop speculating, right? Uh, I don't think that there's, like, the more people talk about him potentially cheating or not, like, that reputation stays with you, yeah? That uh, whether, whether the accusation is true, whether it's not, still you are going to be branded by a lot of people as a cheater. Um, and at least people will know that this this was a question. You mm -hmm. weren't a hundred. You weren't a hundred percent clean your entire life, and then you got questioned by by some pretty legitimate people. Because, I mean, Magnus hasn't done this before. I don't think I've ever heard him accuse someone. No. So no, that was very out that of he character. Did it, that was very out uh, of character. And uh, again, we we should clarify he didn't actually accuse anyone, but. At this point, <laughs> we're pretty sure what he's saying. Um, it being the first time, it's... I, I love the I love I love the way Fabiano says that. Um, he's uh, with, with that smile. I, I love the way that he says it. That 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 is like yeah. Because it's I mean at this point, like every everybody knows, like they're there. Th that's the reason. It's um that that's the reason. It's pretty. Yeah, it does say something. Um, at least in terms of. Like Magnus believes it, right? It's he's not doing this out of spite or or anger. Uh, well, maybe anger is part of it, but but he's not doing it because he hates Hans's guts as a person. You know, he just uh, he just really believes in what he's doing. 
All right, let's uh, the... let's finish this one on a on a fun. Yeah. So, all right, you guys. So, I think that's pretty much it in terms. Those, those are the timestamps that I had for stuff that I that that like my mods wanted me to cover from this video. Um, as, as I said before, I think I think everything that Fabiano says here is um, now comes the fun though. Oh, is it, I, I don't I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't have any more timestamps uh, to, to cover, but. Um, as I, as I see it, I mean, everything, everything Fabiano says there is, is, is pretty much like most of this stuff is, is supposed to be, I mean, not supposed to be, but it is known. It is. You, you need to hear his question. Okay, fine. Let's watch the last four minutes. Why not? I'll, oh, no. I'll, I'll, sh I'll, I'll show them some more love. And I've seen a couple of funny questions from the chat. Um, let me, okay. Let me let's see how it this. ends. Wait, wait, wait. Where is it? This is on. Right. Oh wait, this Does is on. Fabi wait, think? this is on me. What is it really bad? Is it like, wait, is is it not appropriate? Oh, is is it not appropriate? It's not appropriate. Uh, let me see. Oh, it's it's just jokes. Um. Okay, fine. My mods want me to continue. Fine, let's keep going. That's strategically. I legally have to keep playing it since I started. Okay, fine. Okay. Cheating <laughs> method. <laughs> I mean, I'm. Uh... I'm not an expert. I mean, maybe ask your proctologist. I, like, <laughs> like they'll probably be able to tell you how sensitive you are to vibrations in, in case that's the route you want to take for, for chest success. Um, but, but yeah, personally, I don't know. Uh, I, I would guess that something, there's a better way. Like there should be a better way. <laughs> now, um, if someone really, really wants to, but I don't want to give anyone any ideas as well, you know? Um, but <laughs> But uh, I have to say that if, like, besides the fact that it actually got speculated on, that would be the least likely way <laughs> for someone to cheat, right? Like, to have any, if you have some sort of thing on your body somewhere, you know, <laughs> on your leg or in your ear, right? An earpiece. Oh, man. Uh, I, I don't think that that one is the one I'd expect. Mm -hmm. Like, if cheating ever comes out as like exposed on the top level that someone was cheating. Probably not like that. <laughs> I tend to agree with that. Um, cool. All right. All right. Well, Fabi, I think uh, we're past an hour and 11 minutes right now. We've addressed more or less every single point and everything that happened in the last week or so, last couple of days. Everything is moving super fast. Um, I think we're, we're going to probably leave it at that and then probably come back when we have more information and more public statements and things Oh, there's another timestamp. Oh, there's another timestamp. But time um, we do have... Uh, okay, so there's another timestamp. The mods want me to cover one more thing. It's about 960. Okay, let me... Let's um, scroll down. Uh, 728. Okay, so one, one last little bit. 728. Okay, let's go here. Yeah, but I'm sure that like every other move was a blunder by both of us. Uh, but yeah, you know, that's how these tie breaks usually are. That's actually, uh, I, I guess, a good question that we should probably delve deeper into it. Uh, instinct, the question of instinct. How do you, yeah. how does your instinct play out in like chess 960, right? Because chess in general, like normal chess is very much based on pattern recognition. And it just feels like in chess 960 with everything just so random from the beginning of the game, it's so much more difficult to kind of, uh, rely on that pattern recognition and actually that's one thing that i noticed and i thought that hindered a little bit hikaru because i think hikaru is very much on um very much basing his style of play on pattern recognition but i i, I couldn't see it as as clear in, in in chess 960 with him he was missing a lot of things did you feel like you were missing things or oh i, I mean we all were um and the thing is the kasparov said this the opening is the most complicated phase of the game. The only reason why we nav navigate it so well is because we have hundreds of years of mm -hmm. chess wisdom that we can lean on to understand Very the, true. the normal starting chess position. Once you mix the position around, all that goes out the window and you're left with the most complicated possible position. All the pieces on the board, um, all possible sorts of moves and ways to, to develop, and then tactics that spring up out of nowhere. So... That's the reason why you see mistakes, uh, even for for the best players in the world, because these are the most difficult types of positions to make decisions in. Um, mm -hmm. And as for Hikaru, I, I mean, I think he was just maybe not in the best form. 
I, I don't think he has bad intuition at all. Uh, his, he's, he's, his main strength, though. He, he's not wrong though. Like what what he says here, he's not. He, he's 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 not wrong. Um, in terms of Fabiano, uh, Fabiano specifically, he always has been, and the reason why he's been so so strong in, in fast time controls is because, um, his tactical vision is uh, is one of a kind. It's uh, like maybe you would put like him, Magnus, and maybe Maxime among like the top three in tactical vision. But uh, the problem is my tactile vision was not very good when I played Nepo. I mean, to be fair, that game against Nepo was pretty uh, was, was was pretty brutal. I'll, I'll be honest. The game against Nepo was pretty brutal uh, when you talk about tactical vision. Uh, his tactical vision is, is next level. And his um, ability to avoid blunders, especially low on time, that's what mm -hmm. constantly garners him points in these... Um, in these critical moments in blitz games, so that's why he's he's such a good blitz player and rapid player, um, and uh, I mean of course he's also a top player. He's you know he's a well rounded uh, he's well rounded generally in chess, but that's that's what has made him stand out for his uh, his rapid chess skills. Um, in terms of his like intuition compared to other top players, I wouldn't say that it's you know uh, necessarily better. I'm sure there's some players who have a better natural feel for the game, but of course Hikaru mm -hmm. is also quite good in that area um but yeah when you're talking about like let's say hikaru or levon or, or magnus you're talking about very minute differences in uh quality because all of them are very good players but of course in critical moments sometimes uh, they make better decisions and that can lead to um yeah. the difference between winning a game and drawing a game you know losing a game yeah I mean, like, so it's very, very small differences. At the I mean, the one thing that Fabian does not say here, by the way, and I mean, which which sort of signals it all is this isn't about me, but it's like, if you look at Fabiano in the World Championship 2018 when he played Magnus, literally the reason that he lost that match in Rapid was because of one move in, in the Rook and Pawn endgame. He lost because of one move in the Rook and Pawn endgame in that first Rapid game. And that's that's all it took. That one move is the reason he he. Well, I mean, maybe Magnus would have won anyway in the rapid. But that one move was the difference between being in the match and just losing the match to Magnus. One move in the rapid. That's it. That's it. One move. End of story. So he he. What he says there is um, it's very true that uh, that like Magnus is is like he somehow he always makes the right decision. Like he just makes that right decision. At the at the critical moment, he always does. Was the H three? It was the um, it was the first tiebreaker game. Uh, let, let me see if I can find it quickly. Uh, rapid tiebreaker game one. Um, but it, it was like it was literally one move. Um, okay, here we go. I'll I'll pull it up. Pull it up very very briefly. It was the um, yeah. It was it was this game. Let me see. So it was this game, right? And let me let me change the scene, of course. Um. Uh, this 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 probably works. Yeah. So so okay. So like it was this. I think it was this game, right? It was this one. Um. No no wait no no. This is game three. Wait, this is game three. Um, it was World Championship. So there are twelve draws. Um, I think it was this one, the English one, right? Why is it not loading? Uh, I believe it was was it this? Wait, what? Okay, there we go. I think it was this one. Let me see. Yeah, yeah. Th this this was the first tiebreaker game, right? Um. Like this was a first tiebreaker game. They reach this end game here. Now White White is up a pawn here, but this should this still should be a draw. Fabiano played this very correctly um, in the end game. It's still a draw. All this is a draw. I think it was. I think was it King takes e4. I think King takes e4 was a blunder, and after rookie seven is lost. Basically because he played um because he played maybe I don't know if it was King e5 or it was King takes e4, but this was literally what it was. I think this position is still a draw. Of course, there's no engine on chess games, but I think King F6, I think King F6, I don't know if King F6 was a draw or it wasn't, but maybe it was still, but I think, I think it was this critical, this little tickle move, rookie seven. Oh, Fabian will talk about that game. Oh, oh, never mind. So I'm an idiot. Okay. Um, okay. Let me go back. I'm sorry. Fabian will actually talk about it. Okay. I didn't realize that. Okay. Uh, I think you also see that in other sports, right? You know, and, and like any sport, it's, uh, it's fractions of a second. Uh, that separate the the truly great from the the great, but uh, you know, not the the guys who who end up in all the history books. It's the same in chess. I'm gonna give you the chance to address your uh, haters, Bobby. Uh, <laughs> I, I I see this comment and I've seen this comment for many many years. The fact that okay, I guess he doesn't. But yes, actually, I just realized. So uh, Benjamin pointed out the, the the draw here is instead of king takes e4, you go check, and if king f3, you just keep checking. 
and it's a draw. And if white, if white goes king h3 after king e4, rook e7, now you can go king f3 takes rook a1, threatening mate on h1, and it's just very simply a draw. No matter the white king can't get outside the box, and this game ends in a draw. That's all it is. Um, oh, sorry, I'm on the wrong scene. Uh, there we go. Literally, this is the draw. Basically, the, the draw is that because Fabiano didn't play rook a2, if he goes rook a2, as I was saying, you can just check forever and it's a draw. And if white tries to hide the king on h3, you take, and after, uh, well, I guess rook e7 was, was the line that, was, that would be played, you, you go rook a1, you check, and the king can never get outside the box, and it's just very simply a draw at the end of the day because the king has to go to h2. So, like, th this is a draw. But because Fabiano did not play rook a2, because he played the very, very... Um, because he played the very natural natural move here, king takes e4, after this little tickle check with rook e7, that's game over. World championship over, rook g5, rook takes h5, and you lose the game. And that's all That's all that it comes down to. That's it. One wrong move by Fabiano, not playing this very natural king e4, was basically the reason he lost the game. That's the reason he lost, was because he played king takes e4. If he had played rook a2, he would have drawn the first rapid game, and who knows what would have happened. But because he, because he played, got Carols and played this and allowed this little tickle with rook e7, he lost the game. And with that, he, is, he, he was down 1-0 on the rapid, and he couldn't recover. And that's all it took. That's all it took was one wrong move. One wrong move in Magnus's credit. He saw a rookie 7 check, and he won the game. And that was the only difference, was this one move. And so when Fabiano refers to, um, when Fabiano is talking about, like, you know, these critical moments, that's what it comes down to. That, that's really what it comes down to. Somehow, like, Magnus always finds the move in the, in the critical moment. Um, I mean, don't ask me how. I mean, but he does. That's it. He does. So anyway, let's. I think that's pretty much it. Let me check with the mods. I don't think we have anything else to cover from this. Um, but a lot of stuff is said there. I think Fabiano does a. He does. He does a. Um, he does. He does. A, he does a very good job of explaining like what is sort of known behind the scenes. Now again, I read some notes and I saw people saying public information. Uh, this stuff is not really public information as as I understand it. But Fabiano, of course, has made it public information now. So. Um, it, it, it is public information at this point, um, uh, makes a lot of good points. I, I'm actually very surprised by, um, I'm very surprised by what he said about, uh, about Ken, Ken Regan or Reagan, however you pronounce, however you pronounce the last name. Um, I'm insinuating that Magnus cheats in critical positions. Good one. Um, but I'm very surprised at what he says. It really only makes me further concerned about the future of chess, uh, and I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know what the future holds. But I do hope that with someone like Fabiano coming out and saying this, it will change the narrative a little bit. I hope people will take things more seriously because my general read of the situation is a lot of people are very quick to hate on Magnus, to hate on me, um, and it's very easy to do that. Make no mistake. I, I, I will say that we are obviously the easiest targets. But someone like Fabiano, who generally is very measured, doesn't say a lot, is is very like reserved. Um. With him coming out and saying this, I do hope that it gets taken far more seriously. I really, I really, really hope that it gets taken more seriously. Um, but again, we're gonna we're gonna see. We're we're gonna see what you know what exactly what exactly happens. I mean, the next big event is going to be the um it's going to be the US championship. Now, right now, Hans is playing that event. Fabiano, Levon, Wesley are all playing. Um, it's going to be a very uneasy situation. I assume that what we're going to have is we're going to end up in a situation where um, uh, where there has to be a 30-minute delay probably and, and probably far more serious security measures. Uh, I am not playing in it, but that's that's what it seems like to me. That's what that's what it seems like to me is that, you know, the, the chess club in St. Louis, they're probably going to have to change change a lot of things. I'm not I'm not playing the event and honestly I'm very very happy that I'm not because I will say this. Uh and actually you know I did want to point out one thing. So there there was this Levon uh let me see if my mods can find it. There was a uh, um there was a uh there was a Levon interview the other day where he was clarifying something and people completely misunderstood what Levon was saying I felt like. So let me see if I can find the Levon clip. Um, very quickly, because the, the biggest problem with the whole situation is that psychologically, if you're playing someone who has cheated and you, you don't know for sure what's going on, it does affect you 100% in terms of the decisions you make in, in your games. Um, so I think Levon, let, let me see if I can find it very, very quickly uh, from, um, from the mods. Let me see if they, they have it uh, somewhere in here. Let me see if I can find it. I don't see it right off. Um, yeah, here we go. So, yeah, so I'm going to pull this up as well. Let me pull this one up. 
Mm. I think a lot of people misunderstood uh, what I meant, uh, you know, what uh, that I was playing strange, uh, my opponent was playing strange moves and I was getting nervous. Oh, what I meant by that, uh, I just wanted to clarify my yesterday's uh, talk. What I meant for that, that, uh, you know, if somebody is known to have a history of uh, some uh, wrong behavior, uh, even if he's not doing anything wrong, you tend to overthink it. Right, very true. And you tend true. to just uh, get out of the shape. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what happened to me yesterday. Yeah, so this is exactly what I was saying. This is the biggest problem with the whole situation is that um, is that if something has happened in the past, it affects you going forward 100% because you don't know what's happening. You, you have no idea. And so when, when Hans played this G4 move, like, yes, it's not the best move, obviously, but it's a very awkward looking. It's very unusual to play G4. You castle your king to the king side and he does it like it suddenly it starts creeping in your mind. It's like, what, what is this? This is like a very weird move. White's castles. He's pushing pawns in front of the king. Like what's going on? And it just it gets into um, it just gets into your head. And that's actually the biggest issue with the whole situation is that there has to be some resolution because I do believe that um going forward like if people are playing against him and over the board in classical chess there you're gonna see like statistically you'll see a big drop off in their play because of what is uh because of what 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 is now known um are there not players that tend to play strange speculations oh absolutely there it's not that it's not that you can't play moves that are unusual but it gets in your head if you're playing someone who's who's where these rumors are around and they've done things in the past like it gets in your head and you you aren't objective anymore you start worrying you're like okay what's going on here and and like Levon completely collapsed. He just completely collapsed in that game against Hans, and it just it's it's a it's a big problem. That's the that's the thing. So I don't really know how this is. What's this about a chess.com ND on a list of cheaters? Is that a thing? I don't know if that's a thing. Honestly, I've never seen a list. Um, I've seen the, this post about like Yakub, like I think it's Yakubov, Sindarov, Parham, and Sadwani. I think it is or something. But I haven't I haven't ever um, I haven't seen anything. Um, anything more advanced uh than that so at any rate you guys um we are going to stop our topic right there we 